Hello and welcome to another one of my episodes. So today's episode is to do with my podcast. So my podcast is something I'm trying to put out every Friday, one a week, and it talks about different topics concerning gold and silver. So for those of you that don't know me, I am a coin dealer. I'm long on gold and silver. I am pro gold and silver. This is a gold and silver channel, but I also talk about economics. I also talk about buying and selling, you know, I, I'm just trying to build a channel where I can really put value out there. So let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is will the UK, and in brackets, or the US, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, ever suffer the same consequences of hyperinflation such as Venezuela are Zimbabwe? Now I've been doing a bit of reading into this. I made a quasi mini series um, which started off with Zimbabwe dollar meltdown and it spoke about how quickly the wheels can fall off. That video has gained some traction. It's it's now got 330 odd views. Um, so it, it's done okay. The second video in the series, if you haven't checked it out, was Money Supply and Gold. So this is maybe part three of the quasi mini series. It's very loosely related, uh, loosely related, sorry. So I'll get into it. Now, Anyone who follows financial history will, will know that there's been many cases of hyperinflation. You have Hungary, you've got the Weimar Republic, that's a very famous case. Zimbabwe, Venezuela, there's many, many on that list. There are many countries that have suffered at the hands of hyperinflation. And hyperinflation is where the prices go up too quickly. It can be via inflation being pushed, so cost push, where the costs are constantly increased. Or it can be demand pull, where demand for a good or service exceeds production capacity. It can, it's, it's usually built in to part of the system. Like For anyone who doesn't know, the UK government had a target 2.0. I was taught this at, at basic level economics when I was 16 years old. You know, the, the Bank of England wants there to be a slight inflation. And we know this, like if anyone who talks to someone older than them, they say, I remember when X cost X, or X cost Y, sorry. Like as a child, I remember being able to buy penny sweets. You can't buy penny sweets anymore. I think it's a foreign concept to some children these days, what a penny sweet is. I don't think they'd understand what I was talking about. Now, in the case of Venezuela and Zimbabwe, they both suffered crippling inflation. Now, Venezuela up until last year was, was still very much in the quagmire. They owed billions, absolutely billions. And they owed it to a variety of people. And it was de denominated in a variety of currencies. So I, I picked up on an, argue, uh, an article from DW, which is a German uh, source and it says that the debt is estimated to be around 140 billion dollars they were talking about uh, Guado the new prime minister president interim president sorry he's not a prime minister he's 35 years old and he said we can dig ourselves out of this hole we've got enough oil which has crashed in price as most people know we've got enough gold to to go back to our creditors and cut a deal. Now here's the problem with Venezuela. Their debt is denominated in a currency outside of the Bolivar. Now let's look at a parallel. Whilst not the same, Zimbabwe also struggled. So Zimbabwe had a lot of legacy debt from when it was Rhodesia, and this carried on to Zimbabwe. Now, what happened was it had about $700 million debt, according to the source that I've been reading. And that's from the government from Ian Smith. The loans were to buy, to buy weapons, uh, which broke UN sanctions. And when the new government came into force, they were pressured to take debt on by Western governments for reconstruction and development. Now, this is a common theme amongst 
uh, your poorer countries or your developing nations. They will take on debt or they're, they're forced to take on debt. And what will, go in, what will happen is these countries will go in, the debt will be denominated in another currency. The, the debt will then go to the money of companies from this country, whether it be US, UK, China, Russia, all the superpowers are at it. Germany, it's happened. You know, Europe, it's happened. It's very easy to say they're in debt, but they're indebted to countries and it is a form of slavery. I'm not going to go into the politics of it. This is not a political channel. It will never be a political channel. Do I agree with it? No. But there are striking similarities in the sense that the debts owed by Venezuela and Zimbabwe were to countries who wanted payment in non or wanted payment in their own currencies. And I think this is where the problem is. There will be inflation. It's inherently built in the system. We know this. There will be inflation to America, in America. There will be inflation in the UK. There's going to be inflation in Australia, Japan. All these countries will have a level of inflation. But their debt is their own. Their debt is denominated in their own currency. You've got more tricks up your sleeve when the debt is denominated in their, in your own currency. You're not at the mercy of other countries. There are tricks you can you, you can do. So, for example, quantitative easing, you've devalued your currency. You can now pay your debtors back. Now, people have said to me in the past, Sean, you're, you're very pro-debt. Yes, I am. I've always been pro-debt because I know that if debt done correctly, you can borrow it, have it fixed, and then inflation will eat away at that debt. So it's, it's not as bad as you think. It's when people get into debt on bad terms. So say, for example, if you have a credit card and you're paying 30% and it's compounded each month, that is bad debt. If you have debt, for example, you take out a bank loan, you take it out on 3 to 4% and it's capped. That's good debt, because if that debt brings in more money, then you're fine. Now, the, the question that I'm trying to tackle is, can a country keep inflation under control if the debt is in their own, their own currency? And I think the question is, yes, it can. You know, at the world, you, you don't have to make desperate measures. You can refinance that debt. If you're Venezuela, Venezuela, for example, they've got debt in multiple countries and multiple currencies. For example, the ruble, the yuan, the US dollar, no doubt probably the pound and the euro. Its, its own currency is being pulled every which way. And if they are being devalued, it's taking more and more to dig themselves out of this hole. Now, Venezuela do has the added benefit of having gold. So when it devalues, as long as the gold's there, it's still going to maintain the same amount of money. Zimbabwe, to some extent, also has gold. They've also got diamonds. But think of a country where they don't have natural resources that can be pegged to a certain standard. It's not going to happen. Now, I personally think off the back of having debt issued in your own currency, you're not going to struggle from hyperinflation. From the many cases I've looked at, the hyperinflation has happened as economies have weakened and you're paying that debt back to other people which is main, maintained at the same rate. I think that's the problem. I don't personally think the UK will, will suffer from hyperinflation. I don't think the US will suffer from hyperinflation. I think inflation will speed up, but I don't think we're going to have the massive increases in such short periods. The economies are far too complex and taking out debt you you're taking out debt on the basis that you can dig yourself out of that debt i call it running up a hill you're running up a hill because if you get to the top you come out leaner you come out in better shape of it you do it off the back that it's going to be good for you you take the debt and it's hard work but it's good for you in the long run but if you don't run up that hill you get crushed and I think when you take that debt on denominated in someone else's currency, you make that hill a lot steeper. 
it's a lot easier to get crushed and fall off that hill. So yeah, they're my views on on whether the UK or the US, etc., will have hyperinflation. I don't think it's going to be the case. I think they will be able to kick the can down the road. I think they'll be able to come up with more financial wizardry. I believe that with these economies being larger than developing economies, they've got more clout. They've got more reassurances because when borrowing money, they've got more confidence that they can pay it back. Now, the UK can turn around and say, we want to borrow X amount of money. And investors might say, well, what are you going to put up? And they can say, well, actually, we've got a thriving university, world-class university system. We've got a world-class banking sector. We know that we've got the we we've got the people and systems in place to dig ourselves out of this and it's a compelling argument now if you're a developing country you don't have that argument so you can't afford to issue debt in your own currency to the extent that is needed so that's my view um if people want to challenge it i'm, I'm more than happy to to further the argument i'm not always right you know but i'm trying to put ideas out that engage with people's minds and i'm trying to put out conversation that can further the topic so if you did like it please like comment and subscribe and take care bye